but for those that, that don't know and want to participate, this on that side, you can still uh, register to JSConf, to its CSSConf, and remaining talks for Surface Asia, it's available on the internet. So you basically on every meetup you will have on-site re the registration. That would be all for now. Mm -hmm. And I will return my <laughs> So uh, uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, my a little, uh, my recent hacking and um, and what I'm working on. That uh, and what I found for the free monad and I, how I could use it for like for testing. Yeah. So uh, what I'm what I was trying to do is like making a very simple Slack bot that basically in the channel you could type help that uh, listing all the comments and that I also wanted to like connect uh, connect it to the uh, server database to load some metrics so whenever that I want to know some that today's like monitoring metrics I could like uh, type load metrics to show display some number for me and uh, so uh, a simple that a program for that, and there's already a package uh, package for Slackbot that basically set up everything uh, to communicate with Slack server into Slack action. So for that and put it put inside the event loop to keep listening to the event from the server. And so what I'm uh, what I'm going to do is just uh, receiving that message and dispatch the message to its uh, corresponding handler. So with that, I parse the comment. And if it's the comment is not parsable, then I just, just send it back for uncomprehensible comment. Uh, otherwise, then just trying to other stuff. So with uh, the example list, it's, uh, it's that's only help and load metrics, right? So with data type, you can wrap it into an, like, uh, I call this bot iris. Then uh, there are only two common, one is help, one is load metric. And for the run, the basically just, just dispatch on the comment. Then if it's help, then uh, returning it back with the help comment. Otherwise, then send loading now and uh, calling the function to get metric, then respond it back. So then the problem is that uh, when I want to test this, that uh, I a few of questions come into my mind. Is that it? It is relies on send message, and I have no control on it. That because it relies on the third party API, and in Ruby, that you could use our spec that to to expect the function call to make sure because it's runtime system, you can make sure that it's, uh, the method is, is, is called and you could return some like mockup response for that. And uh, of course, then you can set up a database uh, this for like for testing the loading data, uh, but that would also uh, uh, need some extra work on that. So uh, with Haskell, that's, uh, uh, as far as I know that it's hard to stop the message passing like method call. And setting up a testing database would work like, like other imperative language do, but that would also uh, make some slowdown and it's a, draw, a little bit drawback for me. So uh, it could uh, fall back to IOMONA for sure, but I'm thinking check, uh, checking around on the internet, see if it's, uh, is there, an alternative way to do that. So, uh, and then I come up an uh, article saying that how to do it with free mana. Basically, that free mana, you, you can think it like into like uh, AST level. That, uh, because Haskell, it, it's hard to understand that. So I put something to, uh, to express it in JavaScript to see how that how the free monarch works. So 
uh, for JavaScript that uh, say suppose that we have a uh, a lot of like comments and in an array to load the, the string, and we could have the uh, corresponding function with the same naming and calling into that. So in Haskell, when you could map over something, it's a functor, right? That you have fmap. So, uh, but then with fmap, then me, uh, with a functor, there's a, like thinking like a container. There's a structure with behind it. That so there would be an uh, implicit sequence behind that. You can like do it one by one by one. So uh, in JavaScript, that uh, it's just set up a, a AST and know it's the AST. It's visitor pattern in imperative language. And visitor pattern for the tr uh, tree node, AST tree node, it has an accept function and accept the visitor object that have the corresponding implementation to evaluate that AST. So with this very simple example, it's just a uh, list a sequence. So it only has to keep going to the next and uh, next accept the uh, visitor object. So with visitor object, it, it know how to like uh, respond to the message. If the type is reply loading, then then uh, print out some reply loading for that. If it's load matrix, then print out load matrix for that. And for the walk, basically just keep walk and call back the accept. So that's on the AST level that in all turn is a uh, visitor pattern. But this structure that one by one, you could like make it parallel to Mona that compose with uh, greater, greater than equal to compose them into a sequence structure. So. In data, uh, so with data type, there's a free Mona package, and it comes with template Haskell. So you're just writing down the comment you want to, uh, like compose as the AST. So with the very simple comment sequence that I would always have the next, thinking like a list on the type level. So the comment, uh, the comment tree node, AST tree node would have the next. Then the the thing would either turn out to be a help comment or low metric comment, or I wanted to like reply loading then uh, while the user is waiting for the response and next could be the load matrix. Though th there's a loophole for the next could be the help, but that would rely on the parser. Then use that package, you could leave it to the free monad, though it's a fancy name and sounds it don't know how does it work, but basic, but uh, put it on the type level that uh, you could see a little bit parallel here, that uh, for in Haskell that you define a list, basically it's either that empty list or that an element with the rest of the list. So in Fremont that uh, you could see that A is the, uh, a is the element that f free f is kind of the functor behind it, the structure, and it could either be a pure a pure pure uh, pure functor is an un unit itself, or that you could like use a row correspond to the column here to compose them together. Yeah. So then with the uh, leave it to the free mana level then my previous wrong function would be uh, accepting a lifted mona the common and still running in the slack action. So iterm is like unwrapping the mona that uh, like other mona do. Then, I, then here the still accepting other stuff that uh, like the, 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 uh, the initial version of run do that it doesn't look much different, but that's uh, uh, but with uh, extra prime symbol. But now that we could divide it, uh, like refactor this into the uh, I/O implementation level, or, no, a Slack action implementation. And during testing, I could interpret it in tasks. So 
for previously that of oh, the eternal state, it has to be like send message and get a, a lift IO that uh, lift the IO mana into the Slack action and uh, to evaluate the AST. But now I can, um, it works like a stubbing that I could use a mana state to save the, its output to, uh, to an tax array, but, sorry, tax list. Then, and I can just uh, st keep storing it, keep the, like saving the response message into a tax list. Then after that, I could run with X spec, just test the result should be as expected. So, uh, I, and it will run faster because it doesn't involve any external database state and uh, and it works more like stubbing like in Ruby. So uh, now it's my learning from this that and a little bit conclusion that uh, this, though they might uh, complicate things stuff if you don't know free monad, but if you don't understand, then you could always fall back to IO monad. And uh, free monad also like incur some like wrong time because it's lab associative that uh, I, uh, I read some article that there's code density to solve that for, because it's basically like, uh, like concatting lists. But they would like the t task easier to task without resorting to IO monad. So, and test it semantically and on the common level. So it doesn't uh, have the real side effect come with the comments. And uh, you could also see that from the implementation that it doesn't, in my opinion, it doesn't suitable for the like stopping external survey with a lot of API. Otherwise your run comment will have a big bunch of lists of pattern matching. And that somehow also uh, complicates the code. Yeah, that's it. Any questions? Okay. Uh, it comes with academic paper that basically that the free means that when there's a function, there always have a monarch that comes with it. That is like you, uh, naming some example like function, it could be a list or tree. Yeah. That that mona is like break uh, break it down and compose it together. Like list is like you could always walk from the first of no to the end of it. And tree, you could always say like in order, like there's a sequence that make how you walk with it. And that is the Mona structure to serialize this stuff. So, yeah. so the free means that you could always derive something from the functor that comes with it. And, and the free naming comes with that something in mathematics that's called initial, uh, in, I, th I think it's initial object for that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't uh, really understand the theory. Algebra, uh, algebra. So free term algebra, you don't have any additional laws beyond the fact that you have certain constructor. So in case of monad, free monad means that you can always examine these constructors because if you could not examine them, for example, it would not, no longer be free. It would have so free monads are usually used for the, the situation where you want to come back to the time that you constructed it and use it, for example, for the dragon that you have. So it will, will add some problems to the original functions uh, by the form that you start. It is uh, as well because in the test class of PGR, the paper <laughs> shows that the, the functor It's mana. The, the form defined yeah. is free. And by free, you can say that however you construct them, you 
can always uh, say that the object differ if they are constructed in a different way, so in a different order. IO monad is not like this. So you have associative kind of quasi I think this, this hierarchy of uh, stuff is, is somewhat irrelevant to the relationship that exists between the pre monad and the puncture is, is, is based on. So a puncture that you can turn into a free monad yeah. has to be very specially constructed. Yeah, that is a that makes sense, right? Yeah. If you just take any puncture, you can, of course, you can turn it into a monad that, that, that uh, honors the laws, but usually it wouldn't make sense. Yeah. And it appears to be that higher actual parameter. Yeah. Oh, because actually, what Haskell is used at all times is that, of course, since the category for monad is this. Oh, yeah. So basically, every monad in Haskell is. Yeah. yeah. So whenever we construct a monad, we go back to the original functional certificate and define this functional class. We actually use it as applicative functional also. So now, nowadays, when we define a new monad, we also have to define it that it is applicative. Another question? So it's actually quite nice example of how uh, the, the mathematical embedding of Haskell allows you to make an elegant type cluster. Yeah, that's why, what, what I feel <laughs> in this time, yeah. Well, we can talk about it later. Yeah. Um, maybe uh, whatever, yeah. whatever yeah. you want to do. Yeah. yeah, I would say that naming is that pretty fancy, but actually the intuition behind that, it's not okay. that. We yeah. already have return. Yeah. Not, the, not the same with other languages. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of names. Okay. It's also pressed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a PDF. Just open the PDF. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, me. Yeah. 